Hi everyone and welcome once again to Ruby's Classic Cooking. And today I am making Johnny Cake, otherwise known as Cornbread, which a lot of people think is strictly a southern dish, but you know what? Here in Canada we eat it a lot and we really enjoy it. It's great, served warm with maple syrup and uh, that's what I'm going to do tonight. In fact, I've eaten that many times when I was growing up as supper with some bacon on the side. It makes a wonderful meal. Anyway, so let's get started on our recipe. And first thing I'm going to do is take a half a cup of milk and I'm going to add to that one cup of cornmeal. I'm just going to pour that right into my milk and I'm going to put that to one side. Just let that soak up the milk. Let the cornmeal soak up the milk. So I need it later in the recipe. All right. And now I'm using only wooden spoon and my spatula today. Starting off with the rest of the recipe, I'm now going to be adding a half a cup of shortening to my empty bowl here. And the first instruction is to cream this. And you're going to go, what? You're going to add milk to that? And it's like, uh, no, I'm not going to add milk. I'm going to add I don't add milk, I don't add cream to this. Creaming is an instruction. Before I add anything else, I'm just going to take my shortening and I'm going to beat it around in my bowl and they call this creaming it. You're just beating just a little bit of air into it and making sure it's nice and soft so that it combines well with everything. When you're doing this for uh, cake and they want you to cream your butter, it's very important to do that first. Don't ask me why I didn't write the recipes. I just follow the directions. <laughs> you may not think that makes a huge difference in what it looks like, and maybe it doesn't, but it just beats just a little bit of air in it. And my shortening is now spread out all over the place, and it's softer. And now I'm going to add to this a half a cup of white sugar, just plain old white sugar. In the UK, I think they call that caster sugar because it's just fine granulated sugar. And I'm just going to stir these two items together. Ingredients, I should say, not items. Just keep blending until all your sugar is combined into your shortening. And it kind of changes the texture of the whole dish, the whole, everything in your bowl. If you were to add liquids to this without having done this, your sugar would dissolve in the liquid and your shortening would be going, eh, <laughs> what, do you, what am I doing here? By doing this, it turns your shortening and sugar into something that will combine with milk or with liquids and not separate. Here we go. No sugar left there and it's just very nice and creamy. There you go. All right, now next I'm just going to take my flour and to that I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder, not baking soda. Two and a half teaspoons. So here's my teaspoon. One. That's how I level these off. Two. And one half teaspoon. This is a half a teaspoon. And half a teaspoon of baking powder. I try to measure this fairly accurately because this is your leaven and you don't want to add too much or not enough because that will throw off your, your recipe, that will throw off your final product. And a teaspoon of salt, good old regular table salt. You can add whatever you like, you can add kosher salt, you can add whatever you want. I cooked with regular oral table salt all my life. so. Sometimes I use kosher salt, but usually I don't. Now I'm just going to mix these together with my flour so that it combines nicely here. Here we go. Now that bowl's ready to go. See? You can't tell that there's any separate ingredients in there now. It's all very homogenous. And I'm going to be adding this, three additions of this, and next to my flour, um, I'm going to be adding two additions of one cup of milk and one egg. I'm going to mine these two together in the same bowl. Well, pitcher as it is. Okay. 
No shell today, yay. I'm going to scrape my yolk and I'm going to stir this around. And it says to make three dry and two liquid additions to your shortening and sugar mixture. Don't worry about the cornmeal, that comes later. Now, about one third of this flour goes in here. I just kind of eyeball that in there. Stir that into my sugar and shortening mixture. And there's what it looks like with the first third of flour in it. And now I'm going to add half a cup of milk plus my egg. So I'm going to add a little more than a half a cup of fluid here. My egg and milk mixture. That's going to stir in here. This is a little tricky because it's the first of the liquid that you're adding. There's quite a bit of fat here, so probably, unless my sugar is well combined, it's not going to combine nicely. But don't worry about it. It's well combined here. It's going to come in here. So there we go. It's a few gentle strokes. Don't get too carried away or it'll go flying all over your kitchen. I'm just going to brace it against my body here and give it a stir it nicely here. There we go. You know, see it's absorbed the milk and it's starting to look slushy and lumpy. <laughs> now another third of my flour goes in, leaving me with one third of my bowl here and here as well, which you don't have to be really super, super uh, precise about because it's all going to go in here in the first, you know, by the time you're finished, it's all going to be in here, so just approximately. I also like to scrape my spoon off as I go because you'll have a lot of shortening sugar mixture that'll be get stuck to your spoon that won't combine with your with your ingredients if you don't scrape down your bowl. So scrape down your spoon, scrape down your bowl. Make sure you're getting everything that's in here so it's nice and homogenous looking when you're done. And there it is after the first batch of egg and milk and two batches of flour. Now I'm going to add the rest of my milk and egg to it. I'm going to give that a little scrape up in my scraper too, make sure I get it all. And now I combine all of my, now all my milk will be in here. My milk and egg are totally combined. Kind of stir it until your milk disappears into your batter. I'm going to be baking this off in a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. Don't worry metric people because I'll have all the metric equivalents in my recipe when in the description below when I print this, when I get this posted up. There it is. That's all the milk and two thirds of the flour in here now. And now the other one third of flour is going in here. Flour, baking soda and salt mixture. And now I stir this in. And then when I'm finished, I'll have my nice batter. And then I'm ready for my cornmeal and the half a cup of milk that I mixed together before. I've been sitting here for a bit. And there you go, all of my, all of my flour and milk egg mixture have been added in together. So there you go. And now, and here's the milk and cornmeal mixture that I put together when I was starting. See how it, the cornmeal is now all nice and wet. It's not a dry powder anymore. And I'm just going to dump that all in here and stir that in. And then into my preheated oven this thing is going to go for 40 to 50 minutes in my 8 inch square. Pan, my 8 inch square cake pan, which I have to grease. Now oh, there it is in there. I'm just going to stir this in to my batter and there's my Johnny cake batter all ready to go into my, into my pan. So 
the things I like, one of the things I like about eating in restaurants in the South is that when you're in the South, they might bring you a mini loaf of Johnny cake instead of, instead of bread at the beginning of the meal. Or they might bring you some nice fresh hot biscuits. Here in Canada, we get boring old bread rolls. Unless, of course, you're at a specialty place where they bring you some artisan bread. But I don't understand why here in Canada, people love this kind of bread. Why they never use Johnny Cake or, or biscuits instead of boring old bread rolls. <laughs> now I just have to add a little liquid oil to my pan here. Grease up this pan and then I'll be ready to pop pour in my batter and pop that in my preheated oven. I'm just going to use my little old, my little old uh, pastry brush here to put this on. I like the silicone pastry brush. The bristles don't haven't fallen out of it and it is works really well to get this all over the place and then you can put this in the dishwasher. It used to be a lot redder when I first got it, but that was probably 15 or more years ago, so it has faded over time, but that's okay. Now, my Johnny Cake mixture is going to go right into my 8-inch square Pyrex cake pan. Here we go. 40 to 50 minutes in the oven. All right, I'll be back in 40 to 45 minutes when this is baked and fresh and hot out of the oven to show you the final result. Here's what my cake looks like. And here is my Johnny cake, fresh and hot from the oven. See how golden brown it is and how it's pulled away from the edges of the pan? It's nicely cooked in the middle. There you go. Now I'm going to have some of this for supper tonight. I hope you enjoyed my video today. I hope you'll like, subscribe, Try this recipe at home and join me next time on Ruby's Classic Cooking. Bye for now.